we'll just start with the geometry side. You know, assigning elevation to elements, we carried over all those site-related type functionality on assigning profile elevation. Um, so, you know, constant elevation, slope from a point, slope from an element, you know, all these things, you know, we can do all that here in Open Roads as well. So again, for example, constant elevation, if I want to set this building at 10 feet, you know, I just give it an elevation of 10, locate the element, reset, and it puts it at 10 feet. If I want to slope to an element from another element, you know, then I can just go, okay, well, let me locate the element that I want to profile or the slope to. Let me locate the reference element, the one I just put in there, the slope, and we'll just calculate it at the center of that uh, shape. And then I'll stick that out at that elevation. And then it's quick, you know, if I want to add these to a terrain, so I can add these to a terrain by going over to the terrain tools, selecting from elements, if you will, and then locate that guy and that guy, reset, make them break lines, and it'll create the, the surface. So that functionality, you know, is still there. Now ad hoc attributes. So, you know, when you want to add properties to two things, you know, and for more information, in open roads, we consume uh, what we call item types. So I'm going to switch over to the utilities tab and we're going to kind of focus on these tools here, item types. Let me just show you what an item type is. So here is a dialog that shows my item types, both from that are current in the DGN and some that are coming from DGN libs in my workspace. But here I'm going to just kind of focus our attention on these three. So for example, what is an item type? It's just a, you know, you give it a name for the item type or the group, if you will, and then you can start adding properties. And so each one of these company, installed by, uh, install date, those are properties that are going to be added to some element. And you can see just over here, once you select, like, for example, company, you can see it's a text property. I can give it a default value if I want. I can, you know, so that when I place it, it'll just have that value. You can do things, you can, you know, change it. You can say, well, maybe it's not a text, maybe it's something else. It's a date or, you know, a true false or a number, you know, it could be anything. You can do things like, for example, I can create here under common plant name, maybe I'm placing, you know, I'm going to pull those plant names from a list. I can create a pick list and that pick list can reside in a, a DGN or an Excel file. So that's kind of, so, in, you know, for example, I can quickly come up here under utilities and create pick list. I've created a couple, let me go up to utilities, select pick list. And then I've, you know, I've created some, so you can see it's just, you know, I've created, uh, for example, a tree, and then I've created a bunch of uh, tree values, if you will, there, so that as a user, as I'm placing it, I can just quickly pick whatever I'm placing in this case. And then you can, you know, again, you can pre-populate, you know, the default value as well. So save that. You create these and you can go ahead and add them to things. So let me just pick on a tree, for example, that we have. And you can see in this case, there's no properties other than the basic microstation properties. So if I want to attach that item, you know, I can have it selected or not have it selected, have a selection set, all that kind of stuff. So I just attach item. I decide what I want to attach. I'm going to attach a tree. That was my category. I can go ahead and fill this in if I want now, or I can just fill it in later. And I'm just going to pick a few of these guys. And then let's select one of them. And you can see down here that there's the tree, the AX or attributes, if you will. And so that's it. You know, that's obviously if I place a cell, then I have to go attach items. But you can also, for example, have item types attached to your feature definitions in open roads. So if I come here to feature definitions and let's look at, for example, a point feature here, I've got one set up called water oak and I've gone ahead and attached item types to that feature definition. 
So it's, I've attached that and, you know, and that can be saved in a DGN lib. So now if I were to go and let's say I want to place one of those. So I'm going to place a water oak out here in space. So it automatically grabs the cell. All right. And it, I can change the, any of the item types here or any of the properties and then go ahead and place it. Place a couple of them. And then if I look at those, not only did it, you know, place the cell at the same time, but it attached all the properties. When I select it, you can see on the left hand side now all the properties there. So that kind of takes over what ad hoc attributes used to do. And there's potential to do math and expressions and calculations. You can have it uh, search and pick up any kind of element property or workspace property or DGN property, you know, as you place these things. So it's got a wide variety of use beyond whatever ad hoc attributes could do. And finally, my last thing is the, you know, what replaced the plan view labeler. And that would be under drawing production in the interface, we, we have a civil labeler. And so this is kind of a tech preview. But it's reading a file and just like the plan view label had style files. This is, it's kind of reading a style file, happens to be in XML format currently. And then all my different styles are saved off. So I'll expand the category there and you can see the styles. So I'll expand plan points and I'll select, for example, coordinates, just so we're kind of similar to the one I did in Geopack. And you can see it, you know, this is, I'm in the placement method. If I look at the label manager, I'm just going to show you real quick. It's looking, it's going to place a northing and easting label. Its target's going to be a point Y and X position. And so it's going to calculate the northing and easting there. And it's also going to place a capsule around it. So let me switch back over to the placement. It's going to place a capsule or shape around it. These are all the shapes. We've tried to duplicate all the shapes that we had in Geopack Labeler as well. And we're adding more as we go. And so let me just go ahead and place one so we can see it. So I'm just going to click on this guy. Place one, click on this guy, place one out there, close this, and zoom in so we can see it. Zoom in a little bit, and you can see the label. So it's duplicating the, and of course, this is an intelligent label, just like GFPAC. So if I, when I move things around, it's associated to the element, it'll move. So, so that's what I wanted to cover today and just kind of show you where th certain things that we get asked a lot of, about are, you know, where are they now? That's where they are now. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.